Chun asks, Andreas, did you ever have the privilege of interacting with Satoshi or some of the first innovators in the early days of Bitcoin? What advice did they give you that propelled you into Bitcoin? Thank you. Um, I never had any interactions with Satoshi. By the time I got involved in Bitcoin, Satoshi had departed the scene. I did interact in the very early days with a few of the core developers. In fact, what I did was I picked a fight with them um, over some minor governance and political issue. And um, some words were exchanged, and then some apologies were served up, and um, you know things went on. At the time, I didn't know who the uh, important, let's put it within quotes, or um, committed long-term core developers were. Uh, I was just chatting with some people on Bitcoin Talk and GitHub and places like that, and. Um, I got into some arguments. Some things were said that were probably not very wise at the time. Um, and I actually did apologize for um, being a bit too passionate in my argument. Toned it down a tiny bit. And um, that was it. No respect lost, I hope. And uh, that was my interaction. It's funny that in um, in situations where there are a lot of uh, passionate people who really care about the principles of a technology like this, uh, some of the most common interactions you have are minor verbal skirmishes um, and debates, which sometimes get a bit heated, because people really care about these details. So those are some of the interactions I had with the um, early innovators in Bitcoin and the core developers. Nowadays, um, the interactions I have with uh, the early uh, innovators and core developers are mostly more rare um, because they they are doing their work. I'm doing my work, but uh, overall very pleasant and very interesting. I continuously read the development mailing lists, the GitHub uh, pull requests and issues, both in uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a couple of other projects. And I try to follow what the cutting edge innovations. Um, that are happening in my field are. So I have enormous respect for um, the innovators who are working on these protocols. And I'm constantly amazed at the uh, incredible things they, they come up with. Uh, and then I have to explain them in my books, which is not always uh, easy. So um, that's it. My question is, uh, what if, and this is like a long shot, what yes. if we become the mainstream? Oh, um, yeah, I mean that's that's a great question. What if we become the mainstream? I think that's extremely unlikely um, because that's a generational that's a generational thing. I think it happens, but over several generations. Like for example, I think that eventually the idea of free information, access to all information at all times. Uh, sharing information, being a content creator and publisher as an individual, and not using an intermediary um, to do that, is becoming part of the culture of this generation. So people who grew up with the internet can't imagine a time where, in order to publish something, you had to sign contracts with a publisher and uh, have a gatekeeper who decided what was worth publishing and what wasn't. Um, that you couldn't access information unless you went to a library, and then you only had what they had. Um, so that generation is going to grow up knowing that, and then the generation that still remembers the past is going to die, and then uh, no one will remember a time before the internet. It will. They'll remember it only in terms of a historical documentary that shows funny people with weird clothing behaving in ways we can't quite comprehend, and. <laughs> Which is how it always happens, right? You know, trust me. This, that is going to be funny clothing in 30 years. Um, it always is. <laughs> so the bottom line is that with the next generation, eventually the 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 new becomes normal, the old becomes forgotten, and I think eventually 
you will have a whole generation that is born into a world where banks are not the dominant form of commerce, where, where being banked is not a, a necessary gatekeeper to having access to financial instruments, to having access to commerce, where people can innovate commercial and financial instruments on their own, and when anyone on the planet can do a transaction with anyone else on the planet instantaneously without any controls. That will happen. And at first it will be weird, and then it will be normal, and then people will forget the time when that wasn't the case. But we're looking at three generations, so we won't become the mainstream. Our grandkids, maybe. Uh, just in regards to success and adoption, um, are we in the early adopter phase still, or are we still in the mainstream fringe? Um, you know, I think we're beginning to touch the early adopter phrase. You've maybe heard this. Uh, I've said this before, which is we're not the early adopters. We're still the lunatic fringe. The early adopters come next. Um, you know, one of the funny things that's happened is there's a big transition in simply recognition of certain words. So the word cryptocurrency and the word Bitcoin as a brand is now broadly recognized and recognized by people you would never they don't understand what it is they've never used it they have no interest in the principles they don't understand why it matters it's the currency of hackers drug dealers and weirdos yes all of that but they recognize the word in 2013 if you said hey do you take bitcoin they they would stumble over the word itself now they'll be like no we're not drug dealers <laughs> Progress. <laughs> Soon they'll get it, but in the meantime, at least they were. I was at a comedy show in Chicago, and just like Loki among the audience, Chicago is like a great area for improv. Just after I, we did the, the first event in Chicago, I was at a comedy show, and they were doing this. Um, this improv sketch where one of them was pretending to be a hairdresser and the other one was pretending to be a, a customer getting a haircut. And the comedian being the hairdresser said, so what do you think about Bitcoin? And the, the, other, the other person went, oh, I don't know, I don't understand it. And everybody laughed. And I looked around and going, oh, I hope no one recognizes me. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to be invited on stage <laughs> to try to explain that joke. Um, that was surprising to me. It was surprising to me um, when, you, when you say that word now, people, um, people recognize it. So the zeitgeist has happened. It's on TV shows. I remember when a single article in a single newspaper anywhere in the world was something worth discussing on Reddit for hours. Now it's on every newspaper every day in 30 different countries right so we keep hearing it a lot that's a very big difference from actually using it and i think the number of people using it is probably in the 20 to 25 million so i think maybe 20 to 25 million people have ever used any cryptocurrency of any kind well that's a very small percentage of 750 i think we're not in the early adopter phase Still the lunatic, lunatic fringe, so welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs>